Now, let's go on back into the private chamber of the doctor's office. You know, and I, I, I've developed this little knack even with my eyes closed and one reading contact. Well, I can, I can tell when I get the rolling of the eyes and the twisting of the faces, but you know what? I'm going to give you what God says because this is for our benefit. And I don't want you to think I'm pointing fingers there. The finger points everywhere because if I got one pointing at you, look at how many are pointing back at me and one pointing to heaven. All right? So don't think I'm picking on anybody in here. Don't go out here and say I'm picking on this one, that. No. We are all in this together. We all got sickness that God needs to heal us of. And if we don't want to get healed, we may as well just sit home and wait for the ball game to come on. Every one of them. Every one of them. Thank you very much. Every one of them. Now let's go on in the doctor's chamber for a few minutes. When you go in there and the doctor takes your vital signs. When you go in there and, you know, and, and, and sometimes we have situations we don't want to deal with. Amen. Amen. Illnesses we don't want to talk about. Oh, yeah. And you go in the doctor and some folks are intimidated by doctors. Scared to death of them. Mm. And if you've been through enough illness, yeah, and if you've got to have some terminal stuff, yeah, you might be traumatized and scared. But if you don't deal with it, you never get healed. Amen. And the doctor starts looking you over. He takes, a, first of all, a topical look. He looks at you and sees whether mm -hmm. your eyes are focused right. He looks at you to see whether you're standing up straight or whether your balance is off and all this kind of stuff. And I heard one of the one of the members today talk about some medication that the that they were on the new medication, and one of the things is when you get on a new medication, you've got to adjust to it. Yeah. And you know, one of the things is when we got saved, and my, many of us are still in the adjustment part of the program. Amen. Amen. Right. Many of us Amen. are still staggering Amen. because we're so unused to the medicine that God is to practice. Woo, go ahead, None of us go were ahead. born saved, so it's something we all got to learn how to live with. We've got to learn how to live through. Are you praying with me now? Yeah. So we're in the doctor's office, and the doctor begins to examine. He looks you all over, and I'm reminded that Dr. Jesus, in his words, says, before the foundations of the world, I knew you. God made us and knew all about us. All he's got to do is pick out the chart from Adam and Eve. All right. And he can look there and he can see some of our symptoms right. in the chart. And some of the symptoms in the chart has caused us to have our own symptoms as a cause of the original symptom. And so we go into the doctor's office and some of us are there because we have a detachment disorder. Separation from us, from God. In other words, we are separated with God because of sin. And I don't care where you come from. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how long grandma, grandpa, grand, granddad, or aunt so-and-so, uncle so-and-so, or how your children teach you here. All of us come into this with a separation anxiety disorder because we were separated because of sin from a relationship with God. Now we got to spend the rest of our lives learning how to put it back together. I like the song that says, I'm learning to lean. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. It's something that doesn't happen overnight. It's something that takes time. So it's all because of sin. And then if we don't treat it, the condition is fatal if not treated. Now let me explain what I mean. Let me go to the scripture in the book of Romans that says something like this. For the wages of sin is death. But here's what happens when the treatment plan kicks in. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Now, you know, it's not a one-time treatment. This is a chronic illness that's going to stay with you as long as you're in carnal body. So when you get on the free treatment program, it's kind of like when they put you on diabetes medicine or high blood pressure medicine or heart medicine. Sometimes you'll have to be on that the rest of your life. Now, some illnesses can be taken care of because you can treat the symptoms and then it's done. If you ever had some kind of virus and the doctor gives you an antibiotic, you take it, next thing you know, strep throat is gone if you catch it early. Or, or some, some other disease, and there's some that you can take a vaccine for, and it will keep you from getting them. But there are certain things that we go through that are chronic, and we've got to be on some kind of treatment or some kind of medication the rest of our life. Well, the same thing happens in the spirit. We were born in sin right. and shaken in iniquity. We were born with this condition. And the only thing that's going to fix it is it's going to be a lifetime treatment program. Now, those that don't want the treatment, get the other side. It's fatal. Sin brings death. My God. So... We have to have treatment in order for our condition to get better, in order to be able to live with it. And Paul put it another way. He says that there are two natures at war fighting within me. And you see, I don't care how long you've been saved, you're not going to be perfect down here. Amen. The Amen. only way you'll be perfect is when you go absent from this body and are present with the Lord. Then and only then will you be perfect. I don't care how holy and how sanctified you are, you are not perfect. Because not only does the scripture say that all have sinned, I will add to that we all do sin and come short of the glory of God. And we can start at the pulpit and go all the way to the door. All of us at My some God. point during the fourth My of God. an hour, a day, yes. a week, a yes. month, a minute, yes. all of us My commit God. some kind of transgression yes. against God. God. Yes. Why do you think Jesus taught his disciples to have a short account with the Lord? Give, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Because we all do it. I don't care how saved you are. We all mess up. Now the treatment that Jesus gave the blind man was a topical treatment. He reached down and he took some spit and mixed it in with dirt and made mud cakes and put on his eyes and told the man to wash in the pool of Silo, which means sin. So in other words, he says, I'm sending you. I'm giving you a treatment. Now, I want you to go wash. Now, your sight's coming back. But you took it, and, and, and here's the thing. The man was born blind. It was symbolic of the, the, the fact that we were born in sin. All right, so he gave him a treatment for it so that he could restore his sight. Then other things wouldn't happen. He would no longer walk and bump into things and get bruises or trip and fall because he could now see where he is going. But some treatments have to be internal. And the, 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 let me get back a minute here because I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me go back just a bit. That topical treatment also involves sometimes putting something on the rest of your body. I believe one of the prophets asked the question, is there no balm in healing? A balm is a topical solution. It's a salve. It's a cream that you put on. Now, like when you get poison ivy or you get the measles that just keep you from scratching. You put something on, on a topical to ease the pain until the other medicine kicks in to take away the illness. But it also says in Ephesians that we need to also put something on to protect our skin. If you're going out to work in the yard, one thing you ought to do is have on long sleeves. And you ought to have something on your hands because there might be poison ivy out there. There might be ticks out there. 